Hi there, I'm Sherrod Wellingham. We're going to go have a quick look at the Westpac facilities and home of the Collingwood Magpies. Let's go. Our boxing coach, Anthony Rocker. I want you, come on. Rocco Balboa. Let's see what you got. <laughs> the pretty accomplished boxer. <laughs> All right, that'll do. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Here's one of the blokes just hanging around. We've got Tyson Goldsack over here. G'day yeah. Tyson. Hello, mate. Yeah. Standard locker, just with your, your junk right next to Nick Maxwell. We've got the Monopoly set in here. Collingwood issue Monopoly set. Never sure of a glove in here, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one up here, ten. A few tablets, he thinks he's sore. Whatever. <laughs> Alright, that concludes the tour. Hope you've enjoyed yourselves. I'm gonna go hit the showers, so you're gonna have to take off. Welcome back to game day. A very topical guest this morning. Great to have Sherrod Wellingham in. Welcome to you, Sherrod. Thanks for having us. Happy birthday for yesterday, 24. Thank you. <laughs> now, before we get on to Collingwood, you are Buddy Franklin's uh, housemate, are you not? Yes, uh, we live together. Nick Maxwell has Buddy as captain of his uh, dream, team. dream team this afternoon. Will Buddy play today? Yeah, I'm confident he'll play. Maxie was hitting me up about it all week, making sure that I gave him the inside scoop. So yeah, I'm uh, pretty confident he'll be running around today. Do you feel there's a bit of um, maybe about that? I reckon he's holding back <laughs> on us, uh, Sharon. You had breakfast with him this morning. Is he going all right or not? Yeah, he, uh, he, was, he was nice and relaxed. He's uh, ready. He's confident that he'll be able to kick a bag against the uh, younger team in GWS. So yeah, better. like I said to Maxie in the week, uh, he'll be running around. <laughs> oh, no. Now let's turn up probably the niceties, I think. Tim yep. wants to get into the hard-hitting stuff. And on <laughs> Friday night, <laughs> only go. tell me this, uh, you probably have seen the vision a lot. We're just going to show it in mm -hmm. real time because it all happens so quickly and then we're going to slow it down and let Tim dissect it. That's flat out. So... It's a split decision, Tim. You've been there a number of times. Well, I reckon it is uh, with uh, the way the game moves, how quickly it moves with players. And I'm, look, I mean, Sh Sherrod can't say anything about it, but I'm sure that your initial reaction was that you were going to mark this ball, Sherrod. And then the ball drops, and then you're midair, and then you, you, you're protecting yourself. And if you do slide down frame by frame, I mean, that is going to look a lot worse than what it actually is in real time but um, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the edge that the game is played on now like players have that split second to make a decision and unfortunately for Adam Simpson uh, sorry for um, Kate, Kate Simpson, Kate Simpson uh, he's ended up with a, a fractured jaw and Sherrod you went and saw Kate Simpson after the game you obviously knew that he didn't take any further part was your instinct straight away oh no this isn't great I'm, I'm going to be in a bit of strife for this one I wasn't really thinking about that I was just more you know he didn't look to be in a great way when uh, when he was on the ground, so I just wanted to make sure that he was uh, feeling all right and um, yeah, let him know that it wasn't intentional to hurt him that much. Buck said on SEN yesterday, you'll get some time off. That's a given, three, four weeks, whatever it turns out to be. Maxie shared, well, is Arizona an option now for you? Get some sun, chill out. <laughs> Oh, it's always an mountains. option. It's always, uh, we're always sort of looking for, for another edge. So obviously shows an important player for us. We sent a few guys away last year, so it'll be spoken about. But um, look, let's hope he doesn't get too many to start with, I guess. Sure. I just want to ask you one question about it. After something like that happens, is it hard to sort of not start to think about the consequences of it? Does that play on your mind during the rest of the game? I think for a couple of minutes there, it certainly did play on my mind. You know, you, um, Carlton were really... Uh, really taking the game uh, away from us at that mm. stage and um, the boys were you know letting me know that uh, it, it was a bad thing to have done and so my mind was el was elsewhere for a little bit but then you know you uh, you get straight back into the game and worry about what you got to do. I think Carlton sent uh, Mitch Robinson straight off the interchange bench he ran straight to you and I reckon he chased you as hard as he could for about five minutes then he blew up he couldn't <laughs> run any further but uh, certainly getting inside your head uh, what, what sort of stuff was he saying? Oh, you know, just the, the generic kind of uh, banter that goes on out there. Is he a good but, sledger or just ordinary? Uh, he's, he's not that good. I don't think he's got the uh, brain capacity for it. <laughs> he doesn't have the brain capacity. You, got, you did get some support on, uh, in other parts of Australia, though, uh, from somebody out there. So we'll just show a tweet that uh, was sent by Taylor Walker Hammer. This is, uh, he says, now we're both free for the next couple of weekends. Want to go on holiday together? I'll bring my ears, you bring your glasses, referring to the shades you wear, because you actually can't see too much, can you? No, I can't see too much. Well, luckily, I've got my contacts still in. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty um, light-hearted one from Taylor. So we may join you in Arizona. Let's have a look at the results from Friday night football. Collingwood v Carlton. A wonderful win for Carlton against the odds. Penny Betts kicked four. Nick Dyke in a real surprise packet. He kicked three. Travis Cloak a couple. And in the end, it was a win that the Blues needed to stay alive in the season. Maxie and credit to them. 23-point winners in front of 75,000.
It was, yeah, and it was a tight contest to start with. Obviously, we kicked the first, and then Andrew Collins came in here and uh, some beautiful ruck work just over the top, and uh, nice goal by Collins. Sean Hampson went down early, which was uh, with Swanee's big backside, uh, his knee, so not sure how serious that is, but hopefully it's not too bad for Sean. Um, we see Andrew Walker here kicking a goal. They obviously went small down forward, particularly after they lost Hampson, but it didn't hurt him too much as we saw Walker kicking that. Dale Thomas doing what he does best. He really got us going the first half, and I guess kept us in the contest because we were struggling and we almost stuffed this one up here with uh, Steel Sidebottom who's had a sensational year and just taking his game to another level and I think he's uh, a genuine All-Australian contender this, this season, particularly if he keeps up his form. Cruz are probably the best game I've seen him play this year, I reckon, Darth. Uh, you obviously play in the ruck, so you might have had a look at him. And again, as we see Walker there. So Walker, Betts and Dye can kick nine goals between them. So uh, nine out of 12, which just goes to show you don't always have to have those power forwards. And obviously it was a big win for the Blues, uh, an important win for them to make sure they stay uh, in finals contention. So three things I've learned. First one was beware teams and players with their backs to the wall. Obviously, Carlton uh, been a lot of scrutiny during the week. Obviously, on individuals as well, and I think their individuals responded. Number two, the log jam continues as we spoke about uh, earlier on in the show. Um, there's so many games there that are just so important to make sure you play finals. And number three, as I said, who says you need power forwards? Uh, Diagon, Betts, Walker, all those guys just got the job done for Carlton, and they didn't need someone taking uh, big pack marks like we always talk about having the power forwards. Did it make it more difficult for you guys though? with that small forward line because it was going to be more unpredictable than what it would normally be? Yeah, look, we made a selection. Uh, I guess we, we rolled the dice a bit at selection and left Nathan Brown out and only went with a one tall uh, defender in Ben Reid. Um, but obviously once Hampson down, uh, went down, then Reedy was tall and had to play, I guess, on those mediums and small. So it was a little bit tougher for us. Chris Yaron showed, did a lot of damage on Friday night. He sort of was back to his best. He looked really dangerous. Yeah, he's the, uh, one of those halfbackers who are extremely dangerous when you can see he's running... Running off the half back there, and his skills are sublime. So um, he's definitely one you can't be leaving alone. And uh, yeah, we'll look at what we did there, but we can't be having that. Yeah, massive improvement. And in Chris Yaron been down on form and uh, just absolutely played the house down. Now, quarter time, uh, Sharon, the coach, uh, came across. Uh, he had a bit of paper out, having a chat. Have you got a recollection of, uh, of what he was saying? Here's Bucks having a chat to you. What's going on here? Um, well, with the uh, Carlton midfield structures, um, you know they like to get the um, hip hip knock going and bring it out through the back of the stoppages. So Bucks, uh, as I was playing a high forward role, he was uh, trying to get us to roll up to the back of the stoppage there and um, yeah, just a bit of on, on game day coaching, I suppose. And Maxi, uh, Dagan went to you and played a defensive role and kicked three goals and uh, Armfield went to Heath Shaw and played a defensive role on him. What was Dagan trying to do to you throughout the course of the night? Uh, I mean, most teams now will play one or two defensive forwards, um, mostly one most weeks, so um, it was strange to have two of them there, but just basically dragged me away and dragged me out of the contest and dragged me further uh, away from the ball all the time. So, yeah, it is uh, obviously it is challenging, but I guess my role is not to get 30 touches, so it's not, uh, not as important for me. So I felt like I still sort of helped out with the structure, but obviously they won the game and, and Diagon was a very good player. Travis Cloak, he's been much talked about. Uh, Dane Swan has obviously got a reasonable sense of humour, Sherrod. This is a tweet he sent out. This is post the loss. On a positive note, wrapped to see Travis Cloak has signed with the club today. Just tricking. Wanted to put a smile on some faces around the place for a second. He's, he's good on the tweets, isn't he? He's good. He's always uh, got a few left field tweets coming out of that house. So, uh, yeah, he's good value. Now, David Clark played with the Cats and with the Blues. He is facing uh, football... What are we calling it? Sort of uh, Oblivion. Uh, Siberia. Siberia, yeah. If he gets the matches which is being put up for this. He sees the umpire walking backwards. This mm. is last weekend. He gets down, thinks he's being amusing. <laughs> he's already got a match. If he gets suspended for the 15 matches which is being suggested, he's never allowed to play football again. That is something you would do thinking it's amusing and buggers his life up. Oh, <laughs> well, the only thing missing there is some Benny Hill music. <laughs> <laughs> See, just on that, I mean, this is serious. The rule is in Victorian Country Football League that if you have 16 game suspension across your career, then you're done for life. Now, he had one suspension played for 15 years or so, and now he's been given 15 for that, which would mean he'll never play again. I just think that's crazy. I think that that is absolutely crazy, and I don't like the rule at all. Um, and I think we saw it with someone up in uh, Darwin. Um, Do you like the rule of 16 banning you for life, or you just think that's no, too I don't harsh? No, like, I don't like the rule of 16 as well. I mean, you're talking about players over 20 years. This guy's gone back. He's helping local football. Um, he's not someone who's gone around and 
broken jaws and crack people will always... Darrell White, you're talking about nearly Darryl got banned White, yeah. for life yeah. uh, on, under that rule. Now, you don't interfere with umpires. I, no, Silly, yeah. but... It was I'm quite with, funny. It was a little bit humorous. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> That's what I think. It was. It now, no, we, should, yeah. we should also mention the umpire wasn't injured in any way, was no. he? Yeah. Was yeah. he? I don't I'm funny. pretty sure he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's enough of that. Maxi, he's going to put Sherrod under the quick hand spotlight. We've got top three players. Darcy's amazing race. He and Jack Revolt took on uh, Lindsay Gilby. And who was the other we had? Uh, Richard. Richard. Talk coming up on game day. Remember, Nick Nat New Israel, stay with us. Hi, I'm Sherrod Wellingham from Collingwood Football Club. We're down here to see the advanced screening of Ridley Scott's new movie, Prometheus. Yeah, Are you a sci-fi fan? Uh, I am. I'm really looking forward to this movie. It's going to be an absolute uh, beauty, I'm sure. What was the last sci-fi film you saw? Um, Harry Potter. That's not sci-fi, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Prometheus. I do you know what it's about. What are, we, what are we about to watch? You know it's a 3D movie. Oh, you've already got your time. <laughs> <laughs> blow up and people are going to die, I think. Yeah, it actually sounds perfect. Prometheus, are you seeing this? We just walked out of Prometheus. What were your thoughts? Uh, a little bit scary. The, um, the aliens were pretty uh, realistic. I don't know if I really like uh, aliens too much. I myself liked it, so get down and have a look at it and hopefully you enjoy it. Jared Wellingham in charge of Collingwood TV and the movie reviews. Uh, that's just quite amusing, isn't he? Yeah, you, uh, you wouldn't know it, but he actually left and got that joke in his head and came back. <laughs> <laughs> so we touched on you living with Buddy. You also lived with Maxi. Who is uh, the more highfalutin houseman? Mm. Um, Maxi was a very different person to live with. You know? <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> I learnt the uh, elite lifestyle off Maxi. And, um, and then, what yeah, did so you learn off Buddy? The... Uh, <laughs> oh, no, nothing I didn't already know. <laughs> right. Right, let's deviate and go to the SCG. Uh, 20,000 there is the SCG. Forward line, you might be able to take advantage of their uh, small defenders with them only having Rutten. Sando's got them flying at the moment. They've got a good draw going in towards the finals. They're top four at the moment. Uh, that brings us to quick hands. You know the deal. Max will ask you a quick question, quick fire answer. Do whatever you like here, Maxie. Let's go, Shaz. Do you no feel like a little bit of mood lighting? Yeah, okay. yeah, why not? <laughs> Make sure it's more on him. Sherrod, where's the name Sherrod come from? Uh, my mum made it up. It was a friend of hers uh, <laughs> maiden name. As we said, you lived with me for the first few, few years here at Collingwood. What did you get away with that I never found out about? Uh, well, fair bit. Awkward. <laughs> 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 what would you be doing if you weren't playing AFL football? Uh, probably travelling around Europe at the moment. What do you want to do after football? Go and do that. <laughs> <laughs> you live with Buddy. Is it true that you're his chauffeur in place of paying rent? Yeah, pretty much. You know, um, I get to live there board free and um, yeah, just make sure he gets the game on time. <laughs> Are you <laughs> Is that true? No. <laughs> you better be, uh, today, you better be there on time. Uh, your mum's a chef and uh, she says that you can cook. Have you cooked for Buddy? No, uh, that kitchen hasn't been used in the uh, six months I've been living there. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's didn't just cook for definitely, me the definitely there for yet. looks. <laughs> uh, do you still spend more time sleeping on the couch than you do sleeping in bed? No, I've changed those habits. I spend a bit more time in bed. <laughs> what would you be better at? Uh, my Kitchen Rules or Dancing with the Stars? Uh, my Kitchen Rules. You're into your architect, uh, architecture. Would you rather be a famous architect or a male model? Famous architect. <laughs> Mustard or burgundy pants? Because you wear both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, burgundy. You love your surfing and your skating. Would you rather be Kelly Slater or Tony Hawk? Kelly. Done. Nice performance, performance Maxie. Well done. <laughs> Sherrod, thank you for coming in. Really appreciate it, particularly after Friday night. Good luck wherever you're going to spend the next week or seven. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Sherrod Wellingham, great to have him on board this morning. Great